I want to use this time to tell you about something that most people don't know about universities, and that is how their disciplinary procedures work. The most important thing I can tell you about these processes is that they are governed by confidentiality requirements. And this is for good reason, because if false or malicious complaints were publicized, that could cause retaliation by others against either the alleged victim or the alleged perpetrator, and it could cause reputational damage to the accused and also to the university. Confidentiality can protect all parties, but confidentiality also gives the university cover to use disciplinary procedures as a way of sanctioning staff without actually imposing formal sanctions like demotion or dismissal. Here's a generic case. A faculty member expresses an opinion on social media. This invites a public backlash, which results in complaints being made to the university. The university decides to investigate those complaints by initiating disciplinary proceedings. It can decide to do this even when it's obvious that the complaint should be dismissed out of hand. These investigations can take months and months to resolve. An individual who decides to protect herself by securing legal representation might incur fees into the tens of thousands. The bureaucracy itself can be surreal and stressful. Endless meetings, delays, auto-replies, refusals to meet, ignored emails, etc. I know of quite a few people by now who have been subject to these procedures, and they all say exactly the same phrase, the process is the punishment. It doesn't matter if you're cleared in the end. You had to go through all that, and you couldn't talk about what they were doing to you with anyone except your lawyer, if you can afford one, and your support person, if you have one. You're having all these worries about your job security and how these proceedings might go, and you can't draw on support from the wider community of people in your position precisely because you're not allowed to talk about what's happening to you. Confidentiality makes sense for interpersonal workplace conflicts, but it doesn't make sense when it's the university against the individual member of faculty on grounds that something that they've said is off-message relative to the university's institutional values or branding. Academic freedom is the freedom of faculty to be off message. I've been exceptionally lucky because on the occasions that I've been subject to disciplinary proceedings, the surrounding matters were all so public that I had heaps of support, even if I couldn't talk about exactly what was happening to me. But I want to use this occasion to note that we just don't know how many other academics are being dragged through these processes right now. And for how many of those, that's because they have the wrong views on sex and gender, refusing to prioritize gender identity over sex. We just don't know how many women throughout the universities of Australia, whether that's staff or students or administrators, actually support the gender critical position on the importance of sex and sex-based rights for women and yet are afraid to say so. It's part of the diversity and inclusion agenda of the contemporary university that employees be empowered to bring our whole selves to work. Well, I say it's time to make sure that gender critical people can bring our whole selves to work too.